H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. The concept of your AND logic or OR logic use, and this is the AND logic or the OR logic table out here. The AND logic says that if the both the conditions are true, if both the inputs are true, the output is true. Otherwise, output is false. The OR logic says that if one of the conditions is true or one of the input conditions are true, the output will be true for OR logic. So how to use for loop? So this is specifically a simple syntax of a for loop. The for loop is followed by a parenthesis and parenthesis is followed by a opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. And this opening curly brace is the closing curly brace is the body. The body of the for loop is written within the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace. And within the parenthesis of the for loop, we will have three arguments. The initial statement, which is followed by a semicolon, followed by a conditional statement, followed by a semicolon. And the third argument is your incrementation or decrementation statement, which will be followed by a closer of the uh, parenthesis. The closing parenthesis is given. Now, as, I have, as we have discussed, the first looping will happen where the initial statement will be checked with the condition. If the condition is true, the body part of the for loop will ex get executed for the first time. Uh, if the condition is false, the compiler will terminate the for loop. Okay. For second looping and onwards, the first thing that is going to happen is incrementation and decrementation. The incremented value or the decremented value will be checked with the condition. If the condition is true, the body part of the for loop will get executed. Otherwise, if the condition is false, the body part of the for loop will not execute it. That compiler will terminate the for loop. Now, let us see an example of the for loop in Eclipse. So, I already have the Eclipse in open. So, I will create a new project called as session 11. Click on next button and click on finish and say no to the perspective. I don't want to change the perspective of the theme of Eclipse ID. So inside this particular project, I will create a new package called as for loop package. And inside this package, I'm going to create a new class file called as for loop. And call up the main method because I want to execute the codes and the code result should be thrown in the console of Eclipse. So let us write certain programs on using the for loop. Uh, the programs can be something like this. Let's say a program. The first program can be a program to uh, print numbers from 10 until 19. So if you see out here, uh, we will get to actually print out values from 10, 11, 12, 13 until 19 that is what is the motive of the program so i will create the for loop this is the for loop this is the parenthesis of the for loop and this is the body of the for loop let us first create the syntax of the for loop this is the syntax and then inside the parenthesis of the for loop we have to first give the initial statement that means the initial value of the variable now there is no variable defined out here which will keep the value of 10 because the initial value that we need to print out is 10 that should be the initial value. So, I will keep it in a variable called integer a is equal to 10. So, this becomes our initial statement. The initial statement should be followed by a condition. Now, what is the condition? a should be less than 20. That can be the condition. 
the value of a should be less than 20 and then the the third part of the argument will be the incrementation or decrementation i need to increment the value because i need to print out from 10 until 19 so a plus plus or i can write down a is equal to a plus one whatever is feasible with us so here i will basically give a plus plus now as we have understood that the first looping will happen where the initial statement will be checked with the condition so what will be printed out so i want to so if the condition is true then the looping will start and the body of the for loop will get executed by the compiler so if the condition is true for example because 10 is obviously less than 20 so what should be printed out so i will write down CISO. So I write down something like as value of A is concatenated with the value of the variable A. Okay, and then I want to come to the next line. So I will write down S Y S O U T sys out and I'm using the escape sequence out here. So backslash n basically creates a new line okay and then i will have to uh, that's all this is what you require so how is this for loop going to work now for the first loop to happen the initial statement will be checked with the condition so what is the first initial value of a a is equal to one so this one will be checked with the condition so one is less than 20 the condition becomes true so printing will happen what is the printout printout will be 10 after that there will be a escape sequence out here which will basically nothing but a new line will be uh, printed out and after that for the second looping and onwards the first thing that the for loop will be doing is that first it will increment the value of a so for the second loop onwards first the incrementation of a will happen so the value of a will be from a will become from 10 to 11 because 10 plus 1 is equal to 11 so this is the value of a in the memory right now and this value of a in the memory will be checked with the condition so what is the condition again the condition will be to check if the value of 11 is less than 20 or not it becomes boolean true so if it is boolean true what will be printed out 11 again a, a new line will be left and after that for the third loop to happen again the value of a will be incremented and the value of a will be equal to 11 plus 1 which is equal to 12 and what is going to happen is that this 12 needs to be checked for the condition of is 12 is less than 20 or not yes 12 is less than 20 the condition becomes true so obviously what will be printed out 12 again a new line will be thrown out after that for the fourth loop to happen a will become 13 so a will become 13 right now so a is equal to right now 12 plus 1 which becomes 13 and this value of 13 will be checked with the condition that if the value of 13 is less than 20 or not the condition again becomes true and what will be printed out is 13 okay so until unless the value of a becomes for example 19 so let's say the value of a is equal to 19 so this 19 will be checked with the conditions so and is 19 uh, less than 20 or not the condition becomes true so what is going to happen it will print out 19 and a new line will be thrown out and after that they will be again uh, computation carried out to check out if further looping can happen or not for the computation to be carried out the first thing the compiler will do is that will check the value of a so the value of a will become a will be equal to 19 plus 1 equal to 20 and the condition will be checked what is the condition is 20 less than 20 the 20 does not become less than 20 20 is not less than 20 the condition becomes false the 
Kampala will absolutely ignore the body part of the for loop or rather it will turn terminate the for loop. So the initial value of A that will be you know printed out will be 10 and the last value will be 19 and that is our requirement. So if we save the class file and run it, we will get that particular value. You know, there is a line being thrown out which is blank out here for the simple reason that I have used the escape sequence that is backslash n. Okay. So similarly, I can have another program. Program to uh, subtract the first 100 numbers starting with 100. So what I need to do is very, very simple to understand the first number uh, it will be 100 and this 100 should be the, the next number should be 99 and the last number should be equal to 1 and what is what what we what is supposed to be done this 100 number should be subtracted for 99 the value should be then subtracted with 97 then value should be subtracted from 96 until unless the last value will be 1 and what is the total value of this after subtraction this is what we are going to get from this particular part so in this particular uh, uh, example what we need to do is very, be very careful when we are describing the initial statement and the condition because based on the initial statement and the condition the result will be thrown out by the console so let us first create the syntax of the for loop so I will have to declare a value the initial value will be 100 and that, that has to be kept in the memory and in computer when we define the memory it has to be through a variable so let's say there will be a variable integer x is equal to 100. This is the first value, initial value. And we have to keep on decrementing the value. Okay. So that will be taken on at a later case. But the next argument of the for loop will be the condition. So the value of x should be up to your 1. Last value should be 1. So the condition has to be defined in that particular manner x should be the initial value of x should be 100 it should be greater than or rather less than i would not say less than greater than equal to 1 and then there should be decrementation of the value of x first this particular thing so the initial value of x should be 1 100 100 should be greater than equal to 1. Why equal to 1? The last value of the decrementation that is happening is 1. And we have to basically subtract all these numbers. So, the initial, so if we do not subtract anything, what is the value? And what will be kept inside the memory for numbers which are not subtracted? So, let's say we are not subtracting any values. So, at the initial period, what is the value of no subtraction done in the memory? So I have to keep it, keep it in a variable. I'll call it as subtract. And the initial value will be equal to 0. Okay. Now what we need to do is that we have to print the value of x. So let us first print the value of x. Sys out. I'll write down value of x. concatenate with the value of x so the first value of x will be 100 because that is the first value and this will be printed out only when the initial value is fine with the condition so the condition will be checked is 100 less than or 100 is equal to 1 or not 100 is so not less than greater than 100 is greater than or 100 is equal to 1 or not so 100 is greater than 1 that is true and so all logic out is uh, used out here is 100 equal to 1 that condition is false but one of the condition is true that is why it is completely true because we are using all logic out here so what will be printed out here 100 will be printed out okay now 
you have to subtract. Now, what is the initial value of subtract? The initial value of subtract is 0. So, what we have to do, the computation has to be done in such a manner that the initial value of subtracted is 0 should be subtracted from this value of x. So, subtract is equal to x minus 0 x minus subtract sorry so what is the initial value of x x is 100 right now because for the first loop to happen the initial value and the condition will be checked the initial value is 100 the condition will be checked if the condition is true the first loop is happening so the value of x is 100 100 is greater than 1 yes or 100 is equal to 1 that is false but it's all logic so condition becomes true and will throughout the value of x is equal to 100 so the value of x will be subtracted for the initial value of subtract variable and that is 0 so this will be nothing but you are actually subtracting for the first loop you are subtracting 100 minus 0 which is equal to 100 and that is going to be printed out when we print out the value of the variable subtract so let's say i do a printout so i write down value of subtract concatenate with the value of subtract out here Okay, so let us see how this particular for loop will work. So initially, the value of x is 100. 100 is greater than 1, true. Or 100 is equal to 1, false. But the condition becomes true. So the compiler will get inside the body of for loop and it will execute this group of statements, which are nothing but the group of codes written down within the body of for loop. And the group of statement is that it will actually print out the value of x, which is equal to 100. And then this 100 will be subtracted with the initial value of subtraction that is equal to 0. 100 minus 0 is 100. Th this value will be printed out which will be equal to 100. After that for the second loop to happen, what is going to happen for the decrementation is going to happen. So what, are, what is the decrementation? The value of x is equal to 100, the 100 minus 1 which is equal to 99. So this 99 will be checked with the condition. Is 99 greater than 1? Yes. Is, nine, is 99 equal to 1? No. It's all logic. One of the condition is true. The whole condition becomes true. So what will be printed out? The compiler will move inside the body of for loop. Will print out the value of 99. And then what is going to happen? The subtract computation will happen in which the value of x right now is 99. This will be subtracted from the earlier value of subtraction that is equal to 100 so 99 minus 100 so what will be printed out equal to minus 1 that is what is going to be thrown out and if I throw out the value of this this value will be minus 1 similarly for the third loop to happen the value of x will become 98 98 will be checked with the condition 98 is greater than 1 yes and 99 is equal to 1 false it's a odd logic out here the condition whole condition becomes true so what will be printed out 98 after that the subtraction uh, computation that is subtract equal to x minus subtract will be carried out in which what is going to happen is that the value of x is equal to 98 right now in the memory and what is the value of uh, subtract value of subtract at this point of time is minus 1 so minus minus 1 is going to happen so what is the value of this equal to 99 and that is what is going to be thrown out out here until unless the last value will be something will be let's say the last value is uh, let's say 1 So after decrementation, the last value is 1. 
वन विल बी चेक विद द कंडीशन इज वन ग्रेटर देन वन नो और वन इज इक्वल टू वन द कंडीशन बिकम्स ट्रू वन ऑफ द कंडीशन इज ट्रू फॉर द ऑल लॉजिक वॉट विल बी प्रिंटेड आउट इज वन एंड देन देर विल बी कंप्यूटेशन हैपनिंग विच विल बी थ्रोइंग आउट सम रिजल्ट आई विल गेट द रिजल्ट आउट हेयर अगेन the value of x will be decremented more it will become zero because x is equal to x minus 1 the value of x is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so zero will be zero will be checked with the condition is zero greater than 1 no is zero equal to 1 no both the conditions are true the or logic becomes uh, completely a, a false uh, boolean result will be thrown out by the or logic so the compiler will terminate the for loop so i will get the printout from 100 until 1 because the last value that will should be you know computed will be 1 and i'll also get the printout of the subtraction that is getting carried out so i'll uh, at least show you the value of 100 minus 1 and 99 for the variable subtract okay so i will i'm going to use a ciso statement to differentiate the answer between program 1 and program 2 i will create the differentiator by having a star sign so i'll save the class file and run it if you look at it this is the value the initial value of x is 100 and the last value of x is 1 okay now when the initial value of x of x is 100 the value of subtract is equal to now what is the computation that is done for a subtract variable subtract is equal to x minus subtract the initial value of subtract was 0 the x minus subtract 100 minus 0 is 100 and the value of x is in, incremented to 99 so 99 minus 100 minus 1 again the value of uh, x is decremented to 98 98 minus of minus 1 99 so until this i have shown out here until this i have shown out the result okay going back to the console the next value decremented is 97 so 97 minus 99 is minus 2 again 96 is the decremented value of x so 96 minus of minus of 2 that means 96 plus 2 98 minus of minus is plus so 96 plus 2 is 98 the decremented value is 95 95 minus 98 is minus 3 next value decremented is 94 94 minus of minus 3 is 97 so until unless the value of x decremented to a value of 1 and the last value of subtraction will be 1 minus 51 that is minus 50 so if we add up 100 until 1 sorry if we subtract 100 until 1 this is the final value so if we just want to get the final value what we need to do is that get a final value of subtract variable by creating a ciso statement outside of the for loop i can write down final value of subtract this can be concatenated with the variable subtract so i will get the final value out here which is equal to minus 50 and if if i actually you know comment these two lines i will only get the final value of subtract variable so that's about uh, it your on your for loop uh the for loop works in a typical manner the first loop is going to happen based on the initial statement and the condition from second loop onwards what is going to be first done is the incrementation of the decrementation of the value and then the condition is checked if the condition is true the second loop will happen or the compiler will terminate and the second loop will not happen and no further looping will happen after the termination of the for loop by the compiler so this is how the for loop works and uh, that's about it so thanks for very much for watching the videos if you have any problems please write to us thanks and appreciate